Hello, people! Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about anxiety and autism. What is the link? Why are autistics so anxious in comparison to our neurotypical counterparts? Today, I'm going to give you a few little personal stories about anxiety in my own life and also some of the, the research and statistics statistics on anxiety in autistic people and why this may occur so often in autistic individuals. So if you've been following my YouTube channel for any sort of amount of time you will probably realize that I am I, I have gone through a lot of very poor states of mental health in my life for a long time now. One of the biggest things for me was anxiety. I started getting anxiety problems when I went to secondary school. It was a very big place, there was a lot of hormones going along, there was a lot of older people who were a bit kind of mean and bullyish, um, and so it was a very stressful environment for me. And it was also a lot bigger of a school and there was a lot more noise. There's a lot more people. Um, and this was the point at which I was diagnosed with anxiety. I went to the psychiatrist around 13 or 14 years of age. And they told me, Tom, uh, you have depression and anxiety. And I, I, I was sort of new to all of this. I didn't really know what they were. I knew that anxiety was just sort of an uncomfortable feeling of terror, even when there's nothing going on. And ever since then, it's been quite a big part of my life and it's really sort of put a dampener on how I perform at university, how I performed at school, how I did in social interactions and how it affected my sport and the things that I wanted to do. Now, anxiety is known as quite a, a, quite a common occurrence in autistics. I think it's around 40% of people on the spectrum have some form of anxiety disorder. Now, anxiety for people with autism can be quite, it's a lot more sort of severe if you were to classify it like that because of a lot of the components of autism into playing with the anxiety. Anxiety in general, generalized anxiety, um, is, is just a constant feeling of tension and comfortability and it can lead up to panic attacks in a lot of cases and for autistic people it can lead to meltdowns which are a little bit more different than, than panic attacks. There's more, more sort of typical autism-like responses in meltdowns when compared to panic attacks but I won't go into that too much. One of the biggest factors in anxiety in autistic people is the sensory components or people on the spectrum generally have a different sensory profile um, when compared to neurotypical people. This means that we can have very heightened senses in a lot of different areas which can impact our daily life in a negative way uh, but we also have hyposensitivities, we have worn hypersensitivities, hyposensitivities which means that our senses are dulled. Now for myself, I'm hypersensitive in pretty much everything apart from what's called uh, vestibular, the vestibular system, so vestibular hypersensitivity which is all to do with balance. So I'm very sensitive to everything and I've got terrible balance. So it's, it's you know, nature's done, done the nice thing and given me a nice little sensory profile to deal with. A lot of people on the spectrum can, their anxiety in general can be aggravated on a near constant basis, especially when they're going to school. And this can sort of aggravate any sort of seeded anxiety that they may have um, and make it worse in the long term. Long term anxiety is a form of, you know, form of long-term pain or chronic pain and this can lead to depression which is not a good thing. Anxiety can also come from the difficulties that we have with social interaction. Again, if you're at school, I'm going to bring this, this topic up very, a lot of times because school is the worst environment for us in general. That's what I believe. 
teaches a lot of stuff about dealing with life, but it's, it's absolutely horrific for a lot of us. Um, one of the people that I know described it as most autistic people are traumatised by their events at school, their experiences at school, and you can kind of see why. So interaction for us is very anxiety driving. Eye contact can make us very uncomfortable and can add to that. Just general social interaction, negative experiences with socially interacting with people, um, particularly people if, if you like someone in more than a friend, if you know what I mean, and you mess it up and you don't know why it's messed up and they're weirdly and they stop talking to you and stuff, that can be quite anxiety driving because every time that you talk to someone that you like, it goes up, you just, you, you've got no idea what you did wrong and you just feel like every time you talk to that person, you, your anxiety is skyrocketing because you just, there's no way that you can deal with it. The same thing can be applied to friends, if you're in a social group with a lot of people, we find it very difficult to know when it's our time to speak, and so we can come across as quite rude and direct and stuff, and then that can impact us badly, because if you know that someone's rude, and not, you can see why being rude is going to give you more negative experiences with people, and that negative experience is going to impact your anxiety because you're not going to feel comfortable in the circle of friends or circle of people that you are interacting with on a, on a daily basis. One in three autistics have a severe mental health condition. A lot of the time that can be anxiety disorders. I'm talking severe anxiety disorders, so it's not something to be taken lightly if you've just heard about it. And maybe if you're autistic and you listen to this, you, you, you can sort of empathise with that experience because the whole school thing going out in public can be very very hard for us even at a very young age going to places like supermarkets with our parents can stimulate a lot of meltdowns in those scenarios and that is inherently driven by anxiety another thing that we struggle with is panic attacks panic attacks are quite a big thing for autistic people or you may heard it heard of it being called a meltdown because it's a little bit different as i said but the main thing is is that we are very poor at emotional regulation i've come up with a lot of theories of why we have the problems that we have in life why we have some certain difficulties if you draw back to one of my other videos on the triad of impairments i think it's a lot to do with being able to realize and perceive your own emotions. I think there's a very high threshold for us to perceive something. If it's if our emotions aren't skyrocketed in any sort of area, whether it's anger or anxiety or love or happiness, love, we're not going to be able to perceive them until it's sort of too late and we have panic attack or something. And that can be a very another very big factor in um, driving the the amount of anxiety in autistic people. To round it up, autistic people, we're, we're more likely to have anxiety disorders and whether that's just an inherent thing because of our biology, the, ch the differences in our biology could be to do with receptors for cortisol, the stress hormone, I've, I've seen a few research papers that highlighted that. But I think it's also the main thing is the fact that it's aggravated by the difficulties that we have in life in general whether it be sensory difficulties or difficulties communicating with people. So I hope this helps, it's been a bit of a short video. Um, I'm trying to cut my videos down as much as possible, but it's not working. It's not working, I like to talk. I like to explain things. Um, but anyway, if you liked the video, make sure to like it. And if you have any experiences with anxiety, you have any theories to why autistic people generally a bit more anxious, that's kind of a, it's, it's, it's kind of detracting from the severe anxiety, but if you have any experiences with anxiety, please let me know. So let me know how you deal with it. How do you sort your anxiety out? Do you wear headphones? Whatever. Noise cancelling headphones are best. Just saying. But, but, but. Okay. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more videos by me. And 
make sure to hit the notification bell ding -a -ling, and that will help you get more notifications for when my very infrequent videos come out um, trying to make it a bit more regular life is hard though hope you guys are having a great day hope you're taking some time to relax to chill out and i'll see you guys in the next video see you later